complete yes. 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 If you send me in the mountains, the songwriter says, or in the valley below, whether it's shining or dark, but if Jesus goes with me, all right, man. Mm. I'll go anywhere. I know yes. that's right. Amen. I'll go anywhere. Let's let's pray. Amen. Lord, you are pushing us yes. to a place where we give ourselves without restraint. This is, uh, to say the least, difficult. But uh, we know that you are able, by your grace, to enable us to be all that you were. Yes, God. Your word says in Romans that you fulfilled the law of God. Yes. That you might accomplish it within us. Yes, Lord. And simple what you did was always say yes. Yes. To the Father's will. Yes, God. Without reservation, without resistance, yes. without questioning, your answer was always yes. 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 And even when it came time that you wanted something different. Yes, God. You said not as I wanted. Yes. Yes. But as you will. I lift my hands as the first to admit, Lord, that I repent. Yes. That I repent for resisting. Lord, we ask that you will cause a song that just reach your ears to be the echoes of our hearts. Pray that you will stand up in me one more time. Yes, God. Give me strength to do thy will. Yes, yes. The words that the seed of your word yes, planted God. may bring forth fruit. Yes. To the glory of your name. Yes, God. All those that agree said amen. 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 I want to thank you for your graciousness this week, uh, for your presence today as uh, we continue, rather we conclude. Uh, in our revival focus of uh, shake us again, yes, mm -hmm. shake yes. us again. I yes, want to thank all the, 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 again, the pastor, the visionary, and the, uh, the, the, the servant of God here, uh, Pastor Davis, for the invitation, for your friendship, for your support, mm -hmm. for your prayers, uh, and for your example, for your example. Thank all the Pastor Rogers that I just had the pleasure of meeting. Bless you and Amen. Mm -hmm. all the other ministers and clergy here. We give God thanks and for you God's people. Amen. We, we thank God. As I shared last night, I, I came solo, uh, but, but it's a tribe of us now. <laughs> My wife and, and, and our children are at home resting. As I shared, she, we were blessed to add to our family identical twin girls right. and, uh, just six weeks ago today uh, and um, they got their older brother who's just 17 months watching over them. Right. 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 play our strength in the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> play our strength in the Lord and so I, it's, it's, it's really been a joy to be here that as I've been pouring out uh, that God has been replenishing uh, in me strength. I want to give God thanks for each one of you Amen. that have been uh, instrumental in that uh, being fulfilled. Mm -hmm. I want to get into the word today. And, um, and uh, I uh, want us to turn again to Daniel chapter 12. Daniel chapter 12. I want you 
want you to keep your copy of scripture open because we're going to preach, but, but I'm going to do a little bit of teaching as well in the message today. Uh, we, we, we're going to stay in Daniel the whole time, but, but, but we'll, we'll move between the, the pages of his memoir. Amen. Daniel chapter 12 and verse 1. It says, at that time, Michael yes. shall stand up. Yes. The great prince who stands to watch over the sons yes. of your people. That's enough for now. Y'all, yeah. right. y'all help me preach it this morning. Would you look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. I don't know how you feel about it. I don't know how you feel about it. But sometimes, sometimes. enough is the late American civil rights legend was a petite seamstress yet a powerful symbol come on the rays of her light have beamed across history for her actions of just a few minutes. Rosa Parks refused to stand when she wanted to sit. When later asked about her actions on that Montgomery City bus, she replied by simply saying, I was tired. She said, I had given up my seat before, but this day I was especially tired. Tired from my work as a seamstress and tired from the ache in my heart. And her actions made her a poster, quiet and gentle woman that made a big difference. But that isn't completely true. Because Rosa Parks' role as the mother of the civil rights movement didn't begin in 1955, but actually in 1920. At a young age, she was a seasoned freedom fighter. When she was seven years old, it's chronicled she worried her grandmother because of how she spoke fearlessly to white folk. In one of her stories, Mrs. Park shared after arriving from school how her grandmother was angry with her for picking up a brick to challenge a white bully. Now, 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 you, you, you may think that she was just young and naive when she did this, but before the Civil Rights Movement, some of us may be surprised, but she worked alongside with the Black Panther, right. the Black Power Movement. Mm. This isn't too surprising because it wasn't Malcolm, it wasn't Martin Luther that was her hero, it was Malcolm X. Yes. And to put it mildly today, to put it mildly today, we've sanitized her story a little too much because the real truth is that she had had enough a long time before. And beloved, today I believe that she's in some good company because there are others of us that have had enough too. Uh, you, you, you've had enough of the political drama and the foolishness and that comes from 1600. Uh, Pennsylvania Avenue. Uh, but but, 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 but I, that's not the uh, enough that I'm talking about today. I'm, uh, I'm wondering if you've had enough of materialism and mater manipulation. Uh, enough of the scandals and the sinister plots. And, and honestly, today I wonder if you've had enough of your own foolishness. Yes, yes. Permit me, permit me today to add one more participant to our powwow. His name is Daniel. Uh, now I know we often see pictures of him as cool, calm, and collected, but 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 when we read this, he's he's losing his mind with frustration. He's perplexed by what's going on. Yeah. And he's received vision after vision and everything yeah. keeps coming to a clear conclusion. Yeah. Trouble yeah. is on your tracks. Yeah. Yeah. He sees empires, oppression, nation after nation, yeah. stifling their progress. The rich yeah. getting richer and the poor getting poor. He, he sees this trouble constantly coming on and, and every time he thinks that they're about to reach the finish line, somebody adds another mile. 
Every time they climb to the top of a mountain, a devastating avalanche decimates. And they advance, but the aggressor seemed to be agitated. And, 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 and they lash back. And then we see this in Daniel chapter 11 when it is foretold of evil plans being the formula for prosperity and undercover deals under the table guiding the nation's policies and unlikely evil becoming unstoppable. Uh -huh. Daniel 2 has had enough. Uh -huh. And from what he can see, God doesn't seem to be doing anything hey, hey. at all. Hey. I'm, I'm, I'm sure he thought as he was going through this experience, when will the wicked cease from trouble? Uh -huh. When will the weary be at rest? Yeah. When will enough be enough? Yeah. Daniel is wondering when will the prejudice be purged, the injustice be intolerable, the wicked wiped out, the, the endless struggle. When, when, when would this end? His drive would have been crushed, his, dam his courage would have been damaged, but Daniel refuses to lose focus on the heavenly hope. His, his attention is constantly being reguided back to what God not necessarily will do now, but what God will do then. Uh, he's refocused on a significant shift in our text today. And this shift concludes the chapter of victimization and begins the chapter of victory celebration. Uh, it, it, it's a shift that's not about an update to the trouble that he's been seeing, but it's a complete upgrade to what his eyes have never seen. Oh, yeah. uh, because the Bible says that at that time, uh, at that time is not a change in measure, but in meaning. At that time. This notes that what is about to come has never been seen before. At that time, it's an indication that what's behind the curtain will become the focus of our concentration. At that time marks a shift from current events to eternal consequences. At that time is, is, is like Radio Shack used to say, you got questions. Uh, we, we've got your answers. At, at, at that time is not like this time because it's not about something, but about someone. I'm still at your Bible this morning. The Bible says that at that time, Michael shall stand up. Uh, now, before we shout about it, I'm sure some of you are saying like I was, well, since we know so many Michaels, we, 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 which Michael we talking about? Uh, Michelangelo, Michael Jordan, Michael Jackson, Michael Buble, Michael Phelps, Michael Ely, or the one next door. Uh, since we know so many Michaels, it seems trivial that someone could mean so much. Can I teach it before I preach it today? Because in the Hebrew, the name Michael actually is a rhetorical question that literally translates, what is God? In proper grammar, proper English, though, this would be more appropriately to render well, who is like the Lord. In unique fashion, the book of Daniel answers this question time and time again for this mysterious figure of Michael. This means, get this today, that Michael's identity is revealed in his resume. And so we first learn about Michael through his activity in the unseen cosmic conflict. Yes. Uh -huh. When you read J uh, Daniel chapter 10 in verse 13, that's the first occurrence that we find of Michael. And Gabriel there tells us that Daniel had been praying and, and, and for 21 days, uh, Gabriel had been held up in the cosmic in a war with the prince of Persia. And he would have been overcome except Michael. Oh, yeah came to the rescue. Uh, everything changed when Michael showed up. And, 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 and beloved, don't we need a Michael to fight battles that we can't see? Yeah, and to fight battles for us that we can't always see. Gabriel, Gabriel recalls his victorious coup, but in verse 21 of chapter 10, he reiterates that he didn't just win then. 
but he has a record of always winning. Uh, he, he is the chief leader of the princes in heaven. He never takes an L. He never fails. Michael always wins. Get this, he quickly tells us that Michael comes to the rescue when you need him most. And that Michael just doesn't come to the rescue, but Michael is always a champion. Uh, but the last reference, the last reference is the one that really sets things off for understanding who Michael is that we find in Daniel chapter 12 and verse 1. The last reference is unique because it describes that Michael is the prince, the great prince who stands watch over the sons of your people. He's talking to Daniel and, and you gotta keep track of this. Michael is the greatest warrior that can't lose, the chief of heaven's princes and he watches Daniel, not just over you, but over the generations that are to come. The sons of your people. The ancient understood that the watchman for Israel was not relegated to any angel, but it was the responsibility of deity himself. Uh, let me help you since you're not understanding it because in the 121st Psalm, the songwriter puts it this way, my help comes from the Lord who made the heaven and the earth. Behold, watch this, he who keeps Israel. I shall never slumber nor sleep. You, you know the Bible. It says, Behold, he who keeps Israel, the Lord is your keeper. Uh, Gabriel says that Michael is a protector, a champion, and a keeper. Uh, he wins cosmic fights. He oversees earthly affairs and resides as a personal friend. He, he, he fights battles. He's a counselor in trouble. And he's a real good friend. It's a foregone conclusion what the answer is. But the rhetorical question actually serves for inspiration more than information. It's like the psalmist is asking him, who is the king of glory? Uh, the rhetorical question already has its answer, but it's just for inspiration. And just in case you ain't know who Michael was, it ain't nobody but the Lord. And the reason there's not an answer to the question is because there's no comparison to God. Come on, we were Sean Mitchell. I searched all over. Couldn't find nobody. Look how. Nobody like the Lord. They used to sing it in church like that. And, and can't nobody. At that time, Michael shall stand up. And now I know y'all are probably a little more saved than me. But I actually got a problem with the passage. Because because I'm reading it, it says at that time, at that at that time, Michael shall stand up. So this, since this is God, nobody else but God, why is he only standing now? The text suggests to me that 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 that, that since he's only standing now, he's been sitting. All the other time. Work the text. Work the text. Now, now, again, you you probably more say to me, but I got questions about this. See, because up until that time, a whole bunch of junk been going on during this time. Yes. You mean to tell me with all the trouble I've seen, the heartache that's ahead, all you've been doing is sitting down? Uh, that's 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 I uh, cannot be honest with you that that just feels unacceptable to me uh, It feels unacceptable until I realize what seat he's sitting in Let, let, me, let me help you right there uh, See see there, there, the chairs often define the function that one's activity is doing at home There are many chairs one sit one chair. I sit in to eat 
Uh -huh. One chair I sit in to chill, and another chair I sit in to do work. Yeah. And that means that if I'm sitting at the table, I'm planning to throw down somebody. You, you, you know what I'm saying? I'm ready to eat, right? If I'm at the desk, I, I, I don't need food around me. I don't need a whole, I, I got work to get done. Yeah. Yeah. This, this inference to sitting down in the chair that Michael is rising from is no different. And, but, but since he is God, there is only one chair that he has. It's the seat as sovereign. You just missed the reason to shout, so let me rewind and play that one more time. That means that as trouble has been happening, God's power to preserve, deliver, and overcome have happened all while he's been sitting down. That means, that means for us today that, that, that my life problems, my family issues, and the world crisis, watch this, have been managed by the Creator in a seated position in the world with the beautiful now see, while we sing scare Daniel and every vision that he's seen and is causing him to faint and be sick and fall apart, God is just sitting down. And on top of everything, he, he's not pacing, he's not confused, he's not surprised, but he is seated and sovereign. Look at, look, look, look at God getting the job done in his chair. He's been saving while seated, blessing while seated, protecting while seated. He's been regulating minds while seated, family fixer while seated, way maker while seated. I mean, since he's been doing all this while seated, is there anything? Amen. Amen. Too hard for God. Tell somebody next to you, he still sit down. He still sit down. But he get the job done. At that time, Michael shall stand up. He's been getting the job done while seated, but according to the passage, his next assignment calls for him to bust a move. And can't you see it? Can't you see it in the vision? He, he, he moves swiftly, and decisively, and firmly. This shift has dynamic significance because Michael is standing up, and this is the signal that enough is enough. Oh, yes. Isn't that what God is like? That He always doesn't come when we want Him. That's right. That's right. He's on time. But He's there all the time. Yes, He is. Yes, He is. We don't know the time, the place, or the event, but we do know that He will stand up. Yes, He will. Yes, He will. When He stands up, that's the indication that enough is enough. Is enough. Yeah. Amen. Right. Uh -huh. I submit to us today that this picture of the coming king saying enough is a changing of God yeah. and a new beginning. This speaks of one who has fulfilled a contractual agreement and is due for another assignment. Uh -huh. uh, he, this, this, this standing up is saying that I could remain on this job, but then duty calls me somewhere else. It, 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 can, can, can I go superhero on you for just a moment? It's like it's like when Clark Kent changes to Superman. It's like when Barbara Gordon goes to Batgirl and the Dr. Bruce Banner goes to the Incredible Hulk. Uh, I, I, I want to announce today that when Michael stands up and makes a move from the seated sovereign position, he's standing up as an armed warrior. He has a prearranged appointment to accomplish the next task because when he's up, that means it's enough. And that means so much for Daniel who is troubled by everything that he is going through because this means that everything he's been told is sure and true. There is a here and an after. Yes, paradise is prepared for the people of God. And for Daniel, Michael standing up meant even more when he considered the visions that he had seen before. 
Because in chapter 2 and chapter 7 and now in chapter 12, the ships are clear what is about to go down. Yeah. Can I be like the windings and take you there? Yeah. Uh, in, 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 in Daniel chapter 7 in Daniel chapter 7 there are a couple of shifts there are a couple of shifts that happen and, and I'm going to be out in your way in chapter 7 there's a judicial shift All right. Talk about it. Uh, that, that, that Michael takes a judicial jurisdiction shift yes. uh, that, that in Daniel chapter 7 God moves from being a juror uh -huh. to uh -huh. being the judge that's right that's right that's right, that's right. That's right. In chapter 7, chapter 7, in verses 9 and 10, it begins with God in his seat. Yes. Yes. And in this scene, the Lord appears as the lead juror. Mm -hmm. This means, you know anything about court of law, this means that the facts, the details are seen before the sentence comes. That's right. uh -huh. And because the Lord weighs all things in the balance of justice, it means that while he is still a juror and the courts are deliberating, you better get the house in order. Because while, while, while the jury is out, while the jury is out before, before the judge slaps the gavel, the records are released on our lives and what we did for the good of his glory, what we did for our own pleasure, and even what we do in the secret places. All of that's going to come up when he's, as he's a juror. Yes. But like the instant replay, the evidence is reviewed, the motives are assessed, and intentions are considered. And, and that's why Solomon in his sermon's conclusion says, fear God and keep his commandments, for God will bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing, whether good or evil. Yeah. These works from the divine perspective reveal the loyalties of our heart. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and so when Michael stands up, it means that he's no longer serving on the jury. Yeah. Uh, but he goes on to wear a different robe and becomes the judge. Yeah. And that's what it says in verse 21 and 22 of chapter 7. When, when jury duty is complete, enough is enough. Yeah. Yeah. That, that a judgment was made in favor of the saints of the Most High. Don't miss that. that that's, that's not until everyone has been given a fair shake to choose him, then the verdict will be read. This means that judgment is satisfied, that judgment is for the justified as well as for the guilty. That, that, that judgment is for the saints and the ants. Uh, judge, judge, judgment is for the acquitted and the convicted. Because when things from the court are decided, there are granted no appeals. That's right, his second coming is not to think about the possible outcome, it's to release the results of what the outcome already is. Go ahead and remind the person next to you, say, get your house in order. Get your house in order. While the jury is still out. Get it cleaned up. Amen. Clean it up. Clean it up, Pee Wee. That's that's chapter seven. The shift. Talk to us. The jury. No, to judge. Yes. But not only is there a shift in the judiciary change, but Daniel 2 says that there's a shift in his blue collar contract. Uh -huh. wow. uh, because the Lord in chapter 2 of Daniel moves from building to bombing. Uh, you you got to read verses 44 and 45 of Daniel chapter 2 because the Bible says that all along while the kingdoms of the world were rising up, that God was building his kingdom. Yes, he is. And as God is building his kingdom, yes, Daniel, is. That, that Nebuchadnezzar saw in that dream that yes. we talked about on Thursday night, that, that in that dream he saw a rock, uh, like a like an asteroid, like a, a huge comet come yes. and, 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 and decimate yes. 
the structure that was in the dream. Now you, you can't miss what that thing was saying. It's, it's not saying that it broke it. He's saying it blew it up. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that, that literally, literally, it, it was like, it, it, I know it's sensitive, but it was like what happened at the Twin Towers. Yeah, yeah it, it blew up. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it was a bomb that was released that would cause something to collapse. Like, uh -huh. like, like, like that. It, it was a bomb. Like, God is shifting from building to bombing things. Bombing things. Uh -huh. like God got a blue collar contract rocking uh, his divine dickies. He's, uh -huh. because, because he, when you realize this moment, this awesome image that stood tall, the invisible kingdom's foundation was laid, the structure was erected, the inspection have been passed and it's ready for occupancy. Yeah, right. That's right because the Lord while seated isn't just the juror but is the general contractor that we yeah. uh -huh. That's maybe why maybe that's why Abraham wasn't tripping when he was meandering through the, the land of Canaan. He, right. In fact the, the writer of Hebrews said that he was waiting for the city yeah. whose yeah. foundation did this and build it. What's God? You know the Bible. And, and, and that's my question for us today. Since God is going to shift from building to bombing, what are you afraid of losing that he's already building for you? That's right. That's so true. Amen. Because Jesus said while he was on earth, in my Father's house are many dwellings. If it were not so already, I would have told you. That means that since there are resort accommodations paid for and prepared for me, why live like I got a resort here? That's so true. That's so true. Amen. Speak the word. That's so true. Mm -hmm. I know. I know how we are. We, we want to do our own building inspections and and, and, and approve of the building project on our own. But but the Bible tells me that eyes have never seen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That the ears have never heard. That's so true. Neither has it entered into the hearts of men what God has prepared. Yes, it has. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Those who love him, just remind your neighbor, just in case they miss that, tell me it's a surprise. It's a surprise. It's a surprise. It's a surprise worth it's waiting it. for. It's a like every good builder, when they're finished it's enough, it's enough. Mm -hmm. it's enough. Enough is enough. Uh, the shift of the sovereign is strange. Yes. Michael stands up and the rain judge and the desert has also designated demolition. Yes. The activity according to Daniel chapter 2 says that a stone cut out without hands <laughs> doesn't again reflect a brick being thrown yes. but a bomb being released. Yes. This is an implosion and an explosion. These fragmented pieces of the image. Michael is, is shifting things. And it reminds us, it reminds